Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Senior Cross Nation, and today is, oh, today is the day that I've been waiting for for PvP. I can tell you guys right now, I was a little bit crestfallen when I started hearing the news about PvP and such, because uh, like it, it just the way it sounded wasn't exactly what I was hoping. But with the way things are going and the fact that a lot of my theories. And, and strategies that I've kind of been presenting uh, the last like month or so in my PvP uh, related videos have pretty much ended up being correct. And I, I cannot begin to tell you guys just how happy I am the fact that there's at least some uh, silver lining of hope for both me and every single one of you guys watching this video. As of right now, I am in 13th place, okay? This is day two and I'm in 13th place in PvP right now. Now, a lot of people are kind of already like have their own stipulations as to like, oh, what's, what's good in PvP? What's not good in PvP? Blah, blah, blah. I'm here to tell you that you are all wrong, okay? <laughs> Everything that people are trying to tell you that is not good or that is good and stuff like that is 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 not correct, okay? Or at the very least, uh, they're missing pieces of information that make it not correct, okay? Now, I know a lot of people are kind of just assuming uh, after playing PvP once or twice, they kind of just assume, oh, turtle strategies suck, okay? They are not good whatsoever. You are wrong, okay? Turtle strategies still work, okay? They're still good. The problem that people have with turtle strategies is that they're not using them correctly that's the problem all right uh you're not doing it in the way that it's supposed to be done in order to best supplement your strategy and that's also part of the problem too no one's really having any strategy most people playing pvp right now are just going full on pure damage contests and i'm gonna tell you guys right now if you already don't have some of the best setups in the game you're not going to get top 1000 or let alone top 100 or top 50, okay? I can tell you that right now. And this becomes the area uh, where strategy becomes involved. And honestly, in my opinion, is what helps make the mode shine the most. If you want to get ahead, even with just like fairly average type meta type setups and stuff like that like you don't really have extra attack or anything like that you don't have any special traits you just have decent metals and that's it having a good strategy for your setups and the metals you use skills and everything that's where the most significant difference occurs in in ranking so before i get started and i go over my setups and such and and what works in the actual meta let me quickly go over some of the most like kind of common stipulations or unknown facts that people uh, are, that's kind of going around right now because I kind of want to just like nip this in the butt right now before everybody spreads false rumors and such. Okay. Okay. So the first one I want to mention real quick is actually a little bit of a mistake on my part in my last video. Uh, I said in my last video when watching Lost Prediction Stream that it kind of seemed like uh, your points are what determine your rank. And I just want to quickly like fix that real quick saying that like that's that's not the case. Okay. Points are not related to rank at all whatsoever. Your points are literally there just to reward you those uh, tickets that you get for playing PvP. Okay, that's that's all the points are there for. Uh, what decides your rank is your rank. <laughs> okay, when you beat the 500th person, you become 500th place. That's your rank. Uh, so I just want to quickly clarify that real quick. Something I also want to clarify is the fact that I, there's a lot of people who kind of assume that you can try and hide your setups from other players. I'm here to tell you that, that you can't do that. And I'm not saying I'm not going to let you, that me personally, I'm, not gonna, I'm literally saying that you physically can't do that. The way that the game and mode works is that whatever setup and the order of your setup that you beat the last person with, that is what gets recorded and that is what other people fight against, okay? Now there's something else too that I think a lot of people may not have picked up on just yet, which is the fact that if we could take a look at the Keyblade Order screen, uh, we see, like, obviously we have our three set up right here, okay? However, if you just take a look down below, we see these little dots that are, like, just right here below, and they're kind of spaced out in a way, like, just, just enough that it looks like you can input more of these Keyblade setup uh, slots right here, which leads me to believe that in the future, potentially next month too, because realistically we 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 really did only have like seven six days for PV for this PVP right now since the update for this month. Um, so starting June like next month, we could very easily uh, start having up to seven Keyblades 
that we can use for PvP. That can very possibly see, be a thing. Now, whether or not we'll actually see all seven at once next month, I don't know. But just by looking at the screen, it looks like it's very possible we could have up to seven Keyblades being used at a time for PvP. In which case, if they do, I personally would, would think that would be great. And that would honestly make a lot more sense as to why there's this like five minute time limit. Uh, for PvP, I, like I, that didn't make any sense to me when it first came out in announcements. But if there's seven Keyblades uh, for PvP that are being used at a time, that would make a whole lot more sense, to be honest. As well as the fact that also uh, makes a lot of other strategies, such as my current strategy, a lot easier and viable to use as well. And a lot of you can easily like kind of replicate the concept and strategy that I'm doing. And that's one basically part of what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. The last thing I want to mention real quick too, before I go on to like the actual meta, what's the best strategies, what you should look for and stuff like that. Through my testing and stuff, I basically found out how the Sunni skill actually works, as well as uh, I kind of noticed stuff about skills. So first of all, talking about Asuna, uh, through my testing, I essentially found this out. Asuna activates whenever the status ailment skill would activate itself. Okay, so for example, uh, for sleep, because sleep affects you, the player, at the beginning of your turn. That is when your Asuna skill would activate. Okay, so at the beginning of the turn, before sleep actually affects you, is when your Asuna skill will activate. For uh, for poison, poison actually activates at the end of the round. So Asuna doesn't actually activate until the end of the round. Paralysis, paralysis is a little different. Uh, Asuna will activate whenever the Paralysis will try to skip your metal, okay? That is when Asuna will activate. Sometimes it's at the beginning of the turn because it will try and skip your, your metals right away. Um, sometimes it might be like in between metals, okay? So uh, in terms of Paralysis, it's just whenever the Paralysis would try to skip a metal is when the Asuna skill would activate the first time. And just to remind everybody, you can only use Asuna once beyond that first time like status ailments will affect you just normally and in terms of skills there's no real way to confirm it just yet but from what i've observed so far skills seem to have some sort of higher proc rate uh within pvp and like if for any of you that happen to have any sort of defensive skill like a defense boost four for example on any of your metals uh you might see like it it's just going off like crazy. It might, it won't go off all the, every single time, but it will be going off like crazy. Same thing with like attack skills, status ailment skills too. It won't happen all the time, so it's not 100%, but I definitely feel like skills definitely have some sort of higher, higher percentage proc rate. Again, there's no way to confirm that, but that's just what it seems like so far. All right, so now that I got all of that out of the way, let me go over what you all have been coming here for, uh, which is what are the top meta strategies and whatnot um, what's currently used at the top what actually works what doesn't work and such so the first one's actually the most obvious and and probably the one that everyone's been talking about and such lately uh and it's honestly probably going to be that one that most of you guys watching this video are currently doing too which is pretty much just having a pure damage setup you're literally going pure damage and that's it <laughs> you're just trying to do as much damage with each keyblade as possible and that's it okay and then for anybody who happens to have the skill or is like within the top uh, tiers or as a veteran or something, um, you you also threw on top of it, uh, gave one of your medals a defense boost three max of some sort, or at least a defense skill of some sort, whether it be four or three, one of the two, you have a defense skill on one of your medals within your setups. That's boring and lame, and honestly, it kind of works, but it's not the best. And that's what we're here to go for. It is not the best strategy. It is a good strategy, but it's not the best strategy. Here within Union Cross Nation, okay, we're, we're not looking for beta, beta strategies over here. We want to absolutely destroy our opponent okay we want to leave them with little hope of survival that we we want <laughs> i say i say that i say that jokingly okay pvp is fun okay please don't stop playing pvp <laughs> so in that regards if 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 a pure damage setup doesn't work what does work okay and i'm gonna give you guys the simplest answer 
trying to find a combination between turtle setups, status ailment effects, and pure damage, finding a good combination between all three is your best bet, okay? That is going to be the best right now. And I can easily show you guys too. Like, like I mean, like I've showed you guys right here, I am in 13th place, okay? This is day two, I'm in 13th place. Let me show you my setup. So as of right now, I am using three wishes in round one. And this is what I got. I have man in black in my first slot. I have stained glass number two in the second slot. And, and then I just have HD Vanitas copying HPOs. Now you guys can't tell, but uh, both my HPOs do have extra attack, as well as they both have defense boost four as well, okay? And my HD Vanitas, one of them has extra attack, uh, the other does not. Uh, I basically get to use HPO seven times within my last four slots, all right? So I basically get max capped uh, defensive buffs for my three wishes setup. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, like, how the heck are you winning with a setup like this? I'm here to tell you, and this is where a lot of people's misconceptions about turtle setups are occurring as well. People have the misconception of thinking that uh, they're going to try and win with a turtle setup for that round. That's that's not how a turtle setup within PvP is, is supposed to work, okay? That is not the goal of a turtle setup. The whole point of a turtle setup within PvP is to literally set you up for the next round. So in my case right here, for example, the whole point of my first setup is literally just to set me up for my first round. And I'm basically intentionally expecting to lose round one. Now, a lot of you out there might have that one keyblade that's not very good setup and is kind of like your setup that you kind of just, you just throw the round. You just give the win to your opponent, all right? That's basically what this keyblade is. However, instead of just throwing out my weakest, crappiest damage medals, I'm uh, taking a step further and actually making my 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 worst keyblade and setup a good setup, even if it's not a good keyblade, okay? Uh, and so at the very least, even if I'm not expecting to win with my first round keyblade, it will help me actually win in my second round keyblade. And that is the strategy for turtle setups within PvP. In this case, uh, within uh, my three wishes as well, I have stained glass number two. I have poison two plus on my stained glass number two. For a turtle setup like this, like on my three wishes stuff, you honestly don't need any buffs or debuffs at all whatsoever on a setup like this that you're expecting to just throw and give to your opponent, right? You don't have to have any buffs or debuffs. The only reason I have stained glass number two on here is literally because of his poison two plus skill on him. That is the only reason. That poison two plus skill is there, so that way I can try and bait out and get rid of the opponent's Asuna pet skill. Uh, before I reach the other rounds of my uh, of my PvP setup, Man in Black here, Man in Black here is some hidden tech. I only fought one other person who actually used Man in Black, and I I was I was <laughs> that threw me off. I was like, oh snap, <laughs> what? I was really surprised, but at the same time, I was like also partially flattered that someone else was was thinking along the same lines as me it really threw me off especially because the fact that i went first with this setup so I, I i buffed up all my defense to max and they just use man in black and just races all of it i'm just like what i had to give props to the guy okay so like good job to you <laughs> but yeah kind of just like my example i just gave uh the whole point of man in black in this setup is literally uh, for when I go second when other people fight me. Because of the fact it is an attacker based system within PvP, whoever the attacker is, okay, so kind of like the same way how you are always challenging people with your five or ten tries a day, you are always going first for round one as the attacker. So that also means that for people who end up fighting you, get whoever fight the data that you left behind, you are going second in that case as well. So, in this case, Man in Black here is some secret tech here within my first Keyblade to help get rid of and erase any buffs that my opponent might have, as well to get rid of any debuffs that my opponent might have inflicted on me, such as uh, like strength debuffs like through HD Zexion or Vexen Plus, for example. So now, my second Keyblade is Sleeping Lion, and I have Triple Threat on my Sting Glass number five. Triple Threat is by far the best skill within PvP. Dear Lord, if Triple Threat activates, it will inflict all three status ailments on your opponent. It will inflict sleep, paralysis, and poison. And that was 
absolutely nasty on here. Um, considering the fact that it, my Stained Glass number 5 also has extra attack, it gives me two chances to try and get triple threat to go off in case one of them doesn't go off. Now, my Sleeping Lion setup is pretty much just a pure damage setup, uh, with the only exception being the uh, triple threat that's on my Stained Glass number 5, and my Defense Boost 3 Max that I have on my Chicken Little. Chicken Little is literally only here for the Defense Boost 3 Max. He does no damage, and his ability doesn't really work in pvp either he's i only put him in the setups just so i could have a defense boost 3 max in here and anywhere from top 500 to top 100 is where you, you basically start needing defense boost 3 max at least as of right now but at the very least so far the whole strategy is i basically in a way so far i configured my setup in a way so that not only can i still win as the attacker but I can also still win, and it's actually even potentially stronger when I'm the defending player instead. One of the main difficulties when it comes to trying to strategize for PvP is trying to figure out that nice balance between having an, a really good attacking setup to beat people as well as trying to have a good enough defensive setup so that way you can maintain your rank so other people can't beat you and steal your rank, okay? That is part of the struggle. And what I basically obtained within just my first two kill leads alone is that because of the fact I'm going to be a defending player, three wishes is going to go second within uh, round one, okay? So Man in Black will erase any buffs or debuffs that have been occurred on both of us, okay? So, and then the rest of my Keyblade will just per give me max defensive buffs and then because the fact that they the hpo does last for two turns it carries over into my sleeping lion setup because of the fact that i am the defending player i do get to go first within my second round so in this case i have max defensive buffs and i probably wasted their asuna skill because of my poison within round one so now their asuna is gone and it's round two i have max defensive buffs and i have really strong uh, attacking setup right here okay so now because I can try and get triple threat and stained glass number five um, it seems to go off fairly often then I do a ton of damage on them and then I have uh, defense boost three max so you can barely do any damage to me what happens is is then uh, during round two after I take my turn their turn starts they don't have a Suna paralysis makes them skip their first two medals. Most people are basically just running uh, Stained Glass and Shion or Kyrie EX within their first two slots. Uh, so those get skipped. They literally get no buffs or debuffs at all whatsoever, and they're just left with damage medals, and that's it. And because of the fact they got no buffs or debuffs, and I have max defensive buffs, I am literally impenetrable <laughs> round two. Okay, and this is why I'm saying that, and this is what I'm trying to say that like turtle setups are meant to set up for round two okay there's they're meant to set up for the next round they're not meant to win that round and then from there that's when i use the dark gnaw and my dark gnaw is pretty much the same exact scenario as my sleeping lion for, basically okay i have paralysis two plus on stained glass number four and then i have defense boost three max on vexen plus this is the strategy that i'm going so as of right now a good majority of the people who are uh, playing pvp right now especially within the top ranks of pvp are essentially kind of following the same generic like pattern which is they'll use their best setups within their first two uh turns and they'll have like their weakest or maybe like an, an okay balanced setup as their third keyblade and my strategy that i have right here which is very easily copy copyable for for you guys even if you don't have the right skills or abilities and i'll i'll, I'll explain in a second how okay but my setup does not follow that pattern at all. If anything, it's almost the exact opposite. Because of the fact most people are running their best setups within their first two slots, this is what happens when they fight me. When they fight against my three wishes, I'm intentionally throwing that round. I'm giving them the win, okay? That's what the, that's there for. I'm not trying to win through damage on round one. I'm just setting up for round two. Round two is where everything starts to really happen. I, I basically shut them down and they, can little, they can't really do any damage to me. I practically guarantee my win on round two. We're in round three anymore already, and they've already used their, two of their best setups within their first two rounds. Now they're basically on a balanced or really bad setup that they have for round three. 
but I still have one of my best damage setups for round three instead. So I'm gonna naturally beat them. Now I hope you guys can kind of see how this is actually slowly working out and uh, going right now. Because uh, it, it does involve a little bit of mind games and trying to expect what the opponent is going to have and, and, trying to, and trying to counter it and such. Uh, it does require strategy and that honestly is what I love about PvP. You don't need the craziest of traits or, or anything like that to, to be good at PvP. The only thing to be good at PvP is simply just strategize. Okay, Just have a good strategy. A good strategy alone will help you elevate in the ranks a whole lot better than just having good medals. Sure, good medals help, but a good strategy helps even more. For all of you watching this video, okay, and curious as to how exactly can you try and replicate these strategies that I that I kind of just did, and especially if we end up using seven Keyblades at a time for PvP in the future, uh, how exactly can you go about, like, replicating this and incorporating these concepts within your setups as of right now and i would like your guys help in, in like getting this to happen too as of right now there's not enough if any really status ailment ability skills out at the moment the only thing i can tell so far is that sometimes with the latest seven star banners sometimes you can actually get medals seven star medals that come with triple threat on them but i wouldn't advise pulling just to try and get like a rng chance of getting a skill like a, a triple threat skill i wouldn't advise doing that aside from that though there's currently no way in the game and i haven't seen them release any more copies of like triple threat or status effect skills either uh, in quite a long time. Chances are most players don't have status ailment skills anymore, okay? Um, or at least the, the very best ones, I should say, don't have the best ones anymore. So how can you replicate this? Well, you remember all those really bad, weak, like status ailment skills, like just the normal sleep paralysis poison skills they have right now? You can still use those within PvP if you wish. It's not going to be as good, obviously, but you can still use them. Um, the only thing you got to keep in mind is that if you want to try and get the skill to proc, you do have to tap in order to get it to proc. Okay, You have to physically hit them. You can't use the special ability. That is the major drawback between the basic form vanilla status ailment ability uh, skills. It's the fact they don't activate when you use your special attacks. And as far as I can tell as well, from what I would believe, all your actions that you end up doing when you fight in PvP get recorded. So if you end up tapping someone to activate your uh, your status ailment skill uh, within PvP, as far as I want to believe, that tap will also get recorded when other people fight you. So when other people fight you, you will also tap them still. Uh, that's not confirmed, but that's what I would like to believe. Another thing too, because you guys probably notice as well that I do have like I do have quite a few like defense boost three max and even in my three wishes I have two different medals that have defense boost four. In terms of defensive skills, just use whatever the best defensive skills you have. It doesn't matter if it's max or not. Just use whatever your best defensive skills are and and have them on a medal. Use the medal in your setups and that right there will help you out a lot. Obviously, of course max skills are the most consistent but of course higher level defensive skills also help to like defense boost 4. remember i did mention before that defensive skills did seem to go off a lot not 100 percent but they did seem to go off a very good chunk of the time so even something simple like a defense boost 4 that's not max can still be useful so that's it for today guys so remember guys basically what i'm trying to tell you guys is take advantage of status ailment abilities as much as possible. If you're below rank 1000, I can pretty much guarantee you right now that if you use status ailment effects correctly, status ailment effects will literally help you rise in the ranks so much easier. They literally help you cheese your way through. Once you start hitting the higher ranks of PvP, you'll start seeing a lot more people actually have medals and setups where they just seem to constantly have extra tech up the butt on like a majority of their medals okay so when i tell you that status elm effects beat that that's not a statement to take lightly and this is exactly the reason why i was trying to state before that yes having good medals and good setups does help but what uh but what helps you out even more than that is having a good strategy as long as you guys have a good working strategy within your setups, I can guarantee you guys that will help you rise in the ranks so much better than just going just pure damage. But other than that, if you guys enjoyed the video, 
please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It is the best way to know when I upload more videos such as this one. I, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about all this and hear your guys' experience about the whole thing. I know everyone's kind of had their own gripes or like thought comments about PvP so far. So I, go ahead, leave it in the comment section down below. But other than that, my name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.